Hello, church. Welcome to worship on this seventh Sunday of Epiphany. I'm Pastor Colleen. I'm the pastor here at Grace Lutheran in Shillington. And it is a joy to have you worship with us today. We are continuing to collect breakfast items to contribute to the Governor Mifflin Power Packs. And there is a list of items that we are looking for on our website. So I will point you in that direction so that you can see the things that we are gathering. And if you have an opportunity and are going to be driving by the church, you can drop those things off for us. We would really, really appreciate that. So thank you for your help with that great ministry. But for now, I invite you to prepare worship space at home, light a candle, have some bread and wine or grape juice ready for communion, and then sit in your most comfortable chair and take a deep breath and know for this time that we are together and God is most certainly present. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us that we may bathe in the glory of your son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus, make us instruments of your peace, that where there is hatred, we may sow love, where there is injury, pardon, and where there is despair, hope. Grant, O divine master, that we may seek to console, to understand, and to love in your name, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for today is from the 45th chapter of Genesis, beginning with the third verse. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? 
But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve you for a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it is not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, the Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read responsibly Psalm 37, beginning with the first verse. Do not be provoked by evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong. For they shall soon wither like the grass, and like the green grass fade away. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and find safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord. Who shall give you your heart's desire? Commit your way to the Lord. Put your trust in the Lord and see what God will do. The Lord will make your vindication as clear as the light and the justice of your case like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently. Do not be provoked by the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. Refrain from anger. Leave rage alone. Do not be provoked. It leads only to evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord shall possess the land. In a little while the wicked shall be no more. Even if you search out their place, they will not be there. But the lowly shall possess the land, and they will delight in abundance of peace. But the deliverance of the righteous comes from you, O Lord. You are their stronghold in time of trouble. You, O Lord, will help them and rescue them. You will rescue them from the wicked and deliver them, because in you they seek refuge. The second reading for today is from the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, beginning with the 35th verse. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a physical body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. 
Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also, and from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap, for the measure you give will be the measure you get back. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, peace, and mercy be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So every Wednesday morning from 9.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m., you will find me sitting in my kitchen in front of my computer attending Zoom Bible study with my colleagues. There are most weeks about a dozen of us who meet to talk about Sunday's scripture readings. And most Wednesdays, I come to the group with some idea of where my sermon is going. This was not one of those weeks. <laughs> Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. And it goes on from there. Nowhere. In this gospel text, does it say anything about what to believe? Nowhere. This gospel is all about loving and forgiving and being present. Jesus is creating a culture and a way of life that is counter to all we know. Because, you see, we are hardwired for aggression and anger and violence. Back in December, the New York Times ran an essay with the title, Rudeness is on the Rise. You got a problem with that? <laughs> and in the article, the author talked about 
the rising tide of rage and meanness in our COVID-weary culture? How, she asks, do we respond to a world under stress, a culture in which the guardrails of so-called civility are gone? The evidence of that stress is everywhere. In airports and then in the skies, you can find airline passengers angry about wearing masks, angry about inspection of firearms in their carry-ons, seemingly angry about, well, everything. Close to home, things aren't much better, and it comes from both sides of our ideologically divided society. Whether our tempers flare on an airplane, a highway during rush hour, a long wait at a restaurant, or a hospital waiting room, we seem to have lost our capacity for gracious communal living. We bristle at any new COVID restrictions. We assume that folks we don't even know are out to get us. We live in a world where if you don't agree with me, then you're seen as my enemy. The pandemic has created so much animosity among people. And today we hear Jesus tell us, love your enemies. So in my Bible study, we really struggled with all of this because as one of my colleagues said, I can't do this. I really struggle with the idea of loving my enemies and blessing those who curse me and praying for those who abuse me. And if I can't do the things Jesus commands, who am I? Who does that make me as a servant of God if I cannot follow these commands of Jesus? Am I then an enemy of God? Are we all an enemy of God if we cannot do these things? It was a question we were all struggling with. And then another colleague reminded us, well then, it's a good thing that God loves God's enemies. As a matter of fact, Jesus says, I'm willing to die to show you what this kind of love and forgiveness looks like. Forgiveness and love make no sense to us, but it is what we are called to do. It is what God has shown us through Jesus, and it is the way we are to live out our lives. We have this idea that we live in a cause and effect kind of world. What I mean is that violence begets violence, hate begets hate, and even love begets love. It is a way of being in the world where deeds, both good and bad, should be repaid in kind. Force must be returned with force, violence begets violence, and so on and so on. And yet, when you forgive and when you love, you interrupt this endless cycle and create something new. For love, defined most simply, is seeking the good of another above your own. Love is not a means to an end, it is an end unto itself which in turn creates morality and justice and all the rest of the things we strive for, yet fail to find or manifest when love is absent. If today we simply hear Jesus' words as commands, then they are simply one more thing we will be held accountable for. And ultimately, we will continue to live in fear. But if we hear today's gospel as a promise, then we might just imagine that there is another world available to us at this very moment, and we may see each other as gifts of God and experience the transformation Jesus offers. When you imagine that Jesus is offering an invitation, rather than simply giving a new set of rules, everything sounds different. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given 
to you. Everything sounds different because, well, everything is different. Jesus commanded us to love one another exactly as we are loved by God. No limits, no conditions, no end. All that separates us is constructed by human minds and hands. But we are all equal before God. The body of Christ is impaired by racism, misogyny, homophobia, transphobia, xenophobia, ableism, and a whole bunch of other fears handed to us by those in power who would prefer to keep us all separated and disempowered. But imagine a world in which we discard fear and embrace love. For remember, this is Jesus' sermon on the plain, a level playing field. It is not by accident that he is emphasizing our equal footing. For as soon as we try to magnify our own accomplishments, as soon as we s insist that the gospel allows for us to determine some are better than others and that we are better than others, then we are no longer on that even level ground. Jesus reminds us that we are all on the same level, the same plane. And that truth is liberating and troubling at the same time. For while, while we want to believe we can follow this world that Jesus promises, the truth is that we can't. It's a leveling list, and it again puts us all on the same plane. In other words, this is darn hard work, and it's a process. It's not a linear process, and it often needs to be done again and again. And I just need to say, there are some things that are hard or even impossible to forgive. So please hear this, that forgiveness is not allowing ourselves to be abused or mistreated. Forgiveness isn't synonymous with healing or reconciliation. Healing has its own timetable and sometimes reconciliation is impossible. In fact, sometimes our lives depend on us severing ties with our offenders. But this work is difficult. But as we hear, it is not work that we do alone. Love has an awesome power. It is the power of God working in our world, and Jesus has given it to us to use. We are the blessed people. We are the light of the world, and God means to use us to redeem the world. So dear church, please hear today's gospel as a word of promise, and then go out and love, and forgive, and give, because the world has never needed it more. Amen.
And now let us confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. You teach us to love our neighbors and enemies alike. Encourage your church to follow the leading of your love, especially when it is risky or difficult. Help us to show mercy just as we have first received mercy. God of grace, hear our prayer. Nurture fields that lie dormant, resting until it is time to bloom again. Bless farmers and all who cultivate fields and urban gardens. Give favorable weather for planting. Bring forth from buried seed an abundant harvest and guard against famine and disease. God of grace, hear our prayer. Look upon our world with mercy that we delight in an abundance of peace. Protect all whose lives are marred by war and civil unrest. Release political prisoners and amplify the voices that challenge us to seek forgiveness and pursue nonviolence. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your people cry out for mercy. Console hearts that long for forgiveness. Mend broken relationships. Heal bodies that suffer chronic pain or illness. Strengthen and deliver all whose spirits are troubled. Be with all those who are dealing with the COVID-19 virus those who are sick, those who are recovering, and those who have died. We pray especially this day for Joyce Brown, Karen Capiello, Sherry Dodario, Tom DeWitt, Joan Esterly, Mason Fiervanti, Marilyn Herzog, Holly Miller, Skip O'Leary, Vetti Rickenbach, Sue Sipos, Lauren Sullivan, Claire Steffi, Scott Van Horn, Michael Van Reed, Kristen Widener, Joan Youngerman, and Kathy Zadlow. Grant them healing and wholeness. God of grace, hear our prayer. For our Grace Prayer Family Ministry, we pray for Chris and Pamela London, Kathy Jo Lutz, and Barbara Mazak. God of grace, hear our prayer. We praise you for the saints who have inherited the fullness of your kingdom, as you have raised them to imperishable and eternal life. Sustain us in faith by the promise of resurrection. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promise, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now, dear church, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share that peace with one another. Peace be with you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to God's table. There is a place for you and enough for all. The body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. The blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now God who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen. Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. <laughs>